Hi, this is a requested video about how I did 3D um, and how I used Sony Movie Studio to do so. Uh, first thing I did was I took two videos uh, using this rig right here. Um, basically, it's two Sony action cams. Uh, I'm actually filming with one, hence why that one's empty, and that one is not. Um, this one would go here, and I would snap in front of one to label it as, as left or right, um, making sure I remembered which one was being filmed as left and which one was being filmed as the right eye. Uh, as long as those are... Um, separate and I, I can identify which one's which then when I put it into the software I can make a good 3D video. I'm going to show you how we're going to go with a new project in this is Sony Movie Studio Platinum. Uh, I'm going to choose this bit right because that's what I recorded in uh, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second and we're going to call this tutorial 1 and okay now oh, I have to sorry knew it Adobe so we'll figure this all out. I'm using Adobe Captivate, which I've never used before, and I'm doing this in the Sony Movie Studio, uh, which is what I'm supposed to be demoing. And they're both trial versions, so I don't have any of the software, but I'll show you how to use it. Here we go, we're going to add some media, and I have these two videos. One is a left-hand um, camera, one is a right-hand camera. They're um, in parallel, so they're taken side by side. And I'm just going to take both of those and go ahead and add them. Open them up. And we're going to take our first one and put it down here on this bottom area right there. And then this is then this part is important. I'm going to zoom over, and I'm going to put this one after it. Pull this right down over here. And now Adobe has act actually uh, zoomed out to show both of them um, on the timeline. I like to move this up to try and get two different. Um, uh, have them on different tracks and then you need to move this one down. For some reason Adobe, if I start to move them around after that they try and stay synced as much as possible. So this is the best way to get two different um, audio tracks on separate uh, tracks and two different video tracks on separate tracks. So now this will stay linked here because it's the exact same as the one below it. Uh, I'm sorry, it'll stay linked because it's it still understands it's part of the same video. Um, and this one down here will stay linked to the one beneath it. If you look there. Alright, so what did I just do? I'm showing too many things and I, there we go. Alright, so now that I've moved them both over to the side, I'm going to zoom in like crazy. Over here, there's a zoom in, so I'm going to click that a bunch of times, and I'm going to see where I have audio that doesn't quite line up. Let's have this pan over here again. Alright, so let's go to the very beginning, and I see there's a chirp right there and a chirp right there and they're not lined up so I'm going to take the one that's on the left since I can't move any of them more left I have to take the one that's on the left and try and move that to match up with the chirp that's on the bottom and once I'm pretty close I'll just set it right there go ahead and put my line there and then I go back over here to zoom in again a few times and as we zoom in it centers on wherever I had my cursor so here it is. Now we're going to take a look. Those chirps look really close together, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that is synchronized. Now that I have both videos synchronized, I am good to go as far as uh, taking this first one and trimming it down. So that way, oh, trimming it down to match right there. Now if there's a blue line, it shows me that they're exactly starting at the exact same point. Now I know these chirps will happen at the same time, and my video is synchronized. So now I can go ahead and move both of them back over here all the way, and once they're all the way back I can zoom back out so I can take a look at what I'm seeing. Okay, all the video and audio seems to be synced pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the properties at the very top right here, and when I click on that I'm going to change it from stereoscopic 3D mode off to um, anaglyph. And if you put on your red cyan glasses you'll be able to see this. As soon as we apply there, we say OK. The next thing we want to do is hold shift and click on both of those so that they're both highlighted. You're going to right click and you're going to go pair as stereoscopic 3D subclip. And that right there is our key. Okay, what that did is that made it into a video using the two. As you can see here, if you have the 3D glasses, this looks horrible. So we'll fix that by going to um, this one clip here. We're going to go ahead and right click on there and add a effect. So video events effects. And the one we're going to add is under Sony right here. 
and it's called Sony Stereoscopic 3D Adjust. Once you say OK, it'll go ahead and bring this up right here. Now the horizontal offset is what makes it diverge and converge on a certain spot. So that makes it either pop out of your screen or go deep into your screen. So I'm not going to mess with that right now, but I am going to go to the Corrections tab. And I'm going to scroll down here because there's this nifty little feature here called Auto Correct. And what this does is it makes sure that the height and um, any rotation or any issues with either of the cameras is um, worked out best it can be. So this takes a few seconds, shouldn't take quite that long. I think I'm overloading this little laptop here, but we'll have to see. Oh, there we go, it's moving again. So for 3D, if things are further apart or closer together, not a big deal. But if things are, one is higher than the other one, then your eyes won't process it correctly and, and it won't look very good in 3D. It will probably cause headaches. So that's what the vertical offset and the zoom and stuff like that does. So we go back up here now and actually before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and cross that out. I'm going to say, you know where I want my video to go from? This is all along the runway and that's fun stuff and all, but you know, I really want to see us take off. So I'm going to get to right about here where I know we're starting to take off and I'm gonna bring this entire video clip shrunk all the way over to there right to that spot and I know I have some junk at the end of my video and I don't really care where this actually stops since it's a tutorial so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right about here once you can see us in the air and I'll shrink that down too to there now if you notice one of the audio tracks did not sync with me because it's still attached to the other video and the other video isn't even here so we'll just go ahead and delete that. And then we'll grab our little lonely video here, bring it all the way back to the beginning so there's no dead space in the, in the front of this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that effects thing, that video effects, and it's going to pop up and I don't want to add a new one so I don't have to worry about adding any new ones but we'll just pull this up here, make this a little wider. There's this cool thing now where I can add keyframes. So when I add keyframes, let me see, we'll go down here to where we have our keyframes, and at the very beginning of the video, I want to have, oh, you know what, my cursor, I messed that up. This is all black over here, I can't see anything because my cursor's not over there, so I'm going to bring my cursor back over here where I can actually see some video again. We'll put it at the very beginning. So let's say for the beginning of my video, I want to have it that way the engine is exactly in this, can we see the engine now? All right, we can see the engine. The engine is going to be exactly level with my screen. So everything past the engine is going to be going into my TV screen, and everything in front of the engine is going to be popping out of my TV screen. So to do that, I'd go up to my vertical offset, and I would make it that way the bl blue and the red line up perfectly. And this is really easy with 3D glasses. Um, but even without, you can get an idea as to what's going on. So I line that up perfectly right there. Now I'm going to drag this over a little bit. I'm going to say, you know what, as we get higher in the air, I want to go ahead and have the engine be closer and I want us to pop out the other way so um, you can adjust all this stuff just wherever you want to put it as time goes on you can make those adjustments and technically this should be updating in the window but uh, I can't really see it right now because I think I'm using too much processing power so once you got that all set you go ahead and you can just X out of here because it saves it as, as you go and so now I have this video that's all set with going in and out and zooming in and out and uh, having 3D effects be all over the place. And so now I'm going to take my project and I can either do it just like this, so I'm using Anaglyph, Anaglyph um, 3D glasses, the red and cyan, or what you can do now is you can actually go to the properties. And now that you've done editing it with that, if you want to do it uh, like uh, put it on a 3D TV, those usually take side by side half. And what that does is it uh, for for certain screens like the Vizio I know do this they take half the screen and the other half of the screen and then they interlace them that way the left hand of the screen is on your left eye the right hand of the screen is on your right eye now if you notice um, up here that one of these should be left or right you can swap left and right um, if you know which one's which uh, for me I actually did it that way the left is on the left hand side and the right is on the right hand side so that's perfect for me so I go ahead and apply that say OK project make movie I'm going to save it to my hard drive before I upload it to YouTube. I particularly like this one because it has a higher bit rate. You can do, and be, you can actually do anything you want at this point. Um, this one uploads easiest to YouTube, but this one's my preferred method for st storing on my computer. But either way, um, we go ahead and render that whole thing, and if you render that out, 
it's going to give you something like this.